Hey, welcome back to the table. All right, so I got the um, the next set of uh, cards already chosen. I'll reveal those as we uh, take our turn. But basically, um, I'm going to try to move the banner, and I want this guy to go first because I'm going to try to move him with the banner. You know, there's some things going on. Blink Blade is still frustrating me. Um, I am going to get that door open, but not as early as I wanted to. And... Um, yeah, I'm potentially going to get Blink Blade killed. Um, so we're going to have to, because uh, he'll be the one opening the door, and that's not necessarily a good thing. But let's go ahead and draw cards. And they are going last. Uh, this guy is very likely not going to be alive when it's time for him to take his turn. But his five health might be enough to stay alive. Uh, we're going to see. <clears throat> okay, so starting at the top, Drifter is going to go first. And the Drifter is, it's going to move, which means I have to move the token one space to the right. But I am only going to go two spaces because I want to loot. So I'm going to grab that loot. And um, that is going to be a medal. So we got our second loot of the day here. Metal achieved. Okay, then I am going to play our level two card for the top piece. So I'm going to put that into play. These are all my cards that are in play. And we're going to put a token on there. But before I do that, I uh, do get to move one token backwards one slot. So I'm going to move the move one back one slot. And that is done. Okay. So then the Bone Shaper goes. And remember, this is a fake skeleton, so we have two of them that are going to go. And the way this is going to work is this one, of course, is going to move in and attack. So let's do that. And that is going to be for one damage because he has a shield. So then I'm just going to go ahead and attack with the other one as well. And that's a doubler, so that's four damage minus one, which becomes three. So three plus the one is four total damage out of the five that it had. One, two, three, four. So there we go, We're, we got him down to one health. Okay, now we get to do what we wanna do. And so um, Knight is on the board. So I get to move a skeleton and attack with it, and I can do uh, pierce two, which means I ignore the shield. So I am going to move the skeleton that's sitting on the loot, because I don't want him, I need that loot token. And I'm gonna use that skeleton to attack him, and I have a pierce. So as long as I don't get the null, which I didn't, I killed him, because that one damage goes through his shield instead of being blocked by his shield. So this one is dead. Loot token comes out. And then I have for my other card, and that used the knight, by the way. And then for my other card, I'm going to move three. There's no um, leaf on the board, but I'm just going to move three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and take a loot token. And I didn't even need to move this one off. And the banner, by the way, healed me as well. So I forgot to do that. I am up to six out of seven health because of the banner. So um, that was also very productive. And I have to kill one or more enemies of each monster type. So I have for sure killed one of this monster type. And uh, let's come here and grab the loot. So we got a coin. So there is gonna be a um, another monster type, which is the frozen corpse. We've seen those before. And I just gotta kill that and then the mission is complete. Sorry, my dog is demanding my attention. I am sorry. The YouTubers give my attention more than you. Oh. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, that wraps up that turn. Both skeletons are doing great. I uh, Since we only have one more room left, I should probably heavily consider summoning other stuff. But one thing at a time. Banner Spear goes next. Banner Spear heals one and is at 11 out of 12. The Banner Spear 
is going to move two and then grant two allies to movement. So this is the part that gets tricky. So I'm going to move one, then I'm going to grant this one two movement, because otherwise I would have blocked his ability to move. And um, I get to grant another ally to movement. And that ally I'm going to grant is actually the blink blade, and I'm going to open the door. So that will open the door, and let me pause while I get it all set up. All right, so here we are. Um, that's the scenario. We have four frozen corpses, or whatever they're called. Um, <clears throat> there's an altar here in the middle, and um, base, and we also have a treasure chest here in the corner. So this altar has 16 health. It's the scenario level plus one times um, the number of characters. So uh, I, th I think I did that right. No, I'm sorry, the scenario level plus three times the number of characters, that's how I got 16. So three plus one times four. Um, okay, these guys are immune to damage for as long as this altar is up. And this is their ally, this thing. So they can damage us as much as they want, but they're immune to damage themselves. So um, this is a problem. What I was planning on doing was opening that door and then retreating and looting and then letting them just filter through and then we would pummel them. But the problem is, is if they clog that door, I need to get to the other side of that door and damage this thing or otherwise they're completely immune to damage and they're blocking the path. So I absolutely cannot let them move into these two spaces and block the path, which is exactly what they're going to do. So uh, Blinkblade has to take one for the team and run out in the middle of all these guys. <clears throat> and um, he is just not having a good game. So uh, in order to anticipate, or in anticipation of uh, total doom, this is actually his last turn. Oh gosh. Okay, so um, it's open, and I got to make some decisions. Well, here's what they're going to do. We know. So what they're going to do is move zero spaces. So actually, we're good. <coughs> um, no, they're all elite. Never mind. They're going to move one space. Uh, so that's enough for this guy to take this spot. This one won't quite get there, and these two, of course, won't. So we will have a passageway through for everybody uh, to get through that door. Uh, it's definitely not pretty. So I could back up and avoid the damage. Yeah, I could. And I think I will, because uh, I don't want to take damage. Blink Blade's at 5 out of 8. Um, these guys are, uh, this one is now dead, so I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to actually remove him from the game. Now, I also added a round 1. Now, there is a round number here, right? I reset it, um, and it says round 0. So technically, it should be round 1, um, because uh, uh, on the third round, an elite spawns here, and then on the fifth round, an elite spawns there. So uh, the, we were supposed to set it to round one, and so I don't know why the app says round zero. There is no such thing as round zero. So that was annoying. So I added just a little round ticker of my own, um, and we're just gonna have to deal with it. Okay, so there is some flavor text here, so we're gonna go and deal with that. And give me a second. at first you took for a simple underground pit appears now to be something more purposefully constructed a crypt narrow graves have been dug into the earthen walls and signs of ancient burial are scattered everywhere bits of smashed pottery disintegrating cloth however as you move deeper something stirs in the center of the room and a new noise rises to your ears it's low at first like a beast waking in the night. 
But then another noise joins it, and another. Together they form a low chorus of moans. Figures stalk out from the shadows, and it's clear that these are not beasts at all, but a horde of the undead. Lumbering, Olgok's corpses shuffle toward you, glowing with a sickly green aura. There's little time to think, but at the far end of the room, you notice a crumbling stone altar from which burbles thick lines of heavy emerald smoke. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, we have to take out that um, that altar, which has 16 health. And until then, these guys are immune to damage. So that is... And then the summons cannot be focused on them either. So our summons won't blindly be whacking at um, these guys. The summons will go straight for the altar if they can, as long as there's a path. All right, so now it's Blinkblade's turn. I am going slow, so the marker comes on. And um, the plan was to just do a basic move. And I could have attacked if I needed to. Uh, with either of these, right? Um, I can't attack. I don't want to move three spaces and burn a card. I've burnt way too many cards so far. This one would just be a basic two move. And so um, I also have to... Um, uh, well, one thing for sure. I'm going to heal one because it's the start of his turn. And so I'm actually going to move backwards and take this loot. Uh, largely because I have to rest next round. And yes, I could short rest, but remember, he's already burned two cards. Uh, he's sort of in preservation mode. So let's do this, and I'm going to get a medal. And my, two, my decision to go backwards is, like, I could have charged in and done some attacking, but these guys are immune. I could have charged into, like, let's see, I could have moved two spaces, right? I could have been towards the middle of the room, so one of them would have been able to attack me. Everybody else would not have. I could have absorbed one attack, but then I'm stuck, you know. Okay, now I got a short rest, all that stuff. But that would have at least prevented them from moving towards the door. Um, so I do run a risk that these guys are going to block that door. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end the round. And then I just need to go fast with all my characters that still can go and get through that door. So we're going to start with the Bone Shaper. So, for example, I can get my summons to move another two spaces. So I think I'm going to do something like that. And it's a low number, 18. So we're going to move two and have them move two. And then I think um, there's no... I mean, I could wait until after I rest to do this. But I really can start to uh, maybe summon somebody good, right? Maybe get my Wraith out, because uh, it moves two spaces. This guy, uh, they all move two. Um, whoever I summon is going to clog up the door. That's the only problem, because I'm going to move two spaces and then summon somebody, and they're going to be at the door. So i got to be careful about that. But with the Wraith flying, he can, she can fly over any monsters that are in the way. So I'm actually going to summon the Wraith. Um, that is going to shorten my cards. Because um, if I would have waited until after I rested, I would have gotten more total actions. But I think um, this is the final room. And this isn't quite as big of a scenario as some of the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just go for Brook. I also have the Horn of Command, which lets me uh, order them to go somewhere if I need to. Um, so I like that. I'm going to very likely get... Uh, one of these skeletons through that door and um, we are going to be clogging it a bit. These are the final two for the banner spear. So the problem I have here is, I well what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon a reinforcement and then just forego the top card. So I'm going to stay back because remember we're trying to do our mastery which means that I'm ruining my game. Uh, I can't rush in and start going after the altar. I gotta move with this banner. So I'm staying behind, but I'll at least get a reinforcement out, and I do get to control where he goes. 
All right, Blink Blade has to rest, and I'm going to do a 99 for him because uh, Blink Blade um, needs to um, needs to slow down. I'm going to do an 18 for the Bone Shaper, and then the last one is the Drifter. The Drifter, of course, being way back, and I need to get him through the door. So do I? Uh, I want to do this at the top to move two of them backwards, so we'll go ahead and do that. But on the bottom, you know, I don't have a move four. I got rid of the move four through other actions or whatever. So I don't necessarily need to heal. And so I'm going to, um, but I'm going to do this one instead, because that'll let me move four spaces, uh, two natural, and then two more because of the, the boost. And I'm yeah, I'm going to do that. So we're going to at least get four spaces towards that door. And then I'm going to move two tokens backwards. One. So that covers it. So let's draw the cards. There's only one card to draw. And it is the frozen corpse. Oh, I'm sorry. Before the end of that last round, they all moved. So this one, they all would have moved one space. So my apologies. Uh, so one of them is at the door. Uh, and if the other one gets to the door, it's game over for us. And sure enough, uh, they're going to be moving towards the door, but we have a lot of guys that are going to go first, and I'm going to bust through that door. So the Bone Shaper is first. So the skeleton is focusing on the altar. This skeleton is also focusing on the altar, and both of them move too. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, I am going to move myself too. So I'm going to move up two. And then I grant a move two to one of my summons, and I'm going to bust this summon through the door. Just like that. <clears throat> Alright, and then I'm going to summon the Wraith. And that's going to be two experience points for the Bone Shaper. And then also the Bone Shaper gained a health because of the uh, banner. So the Wraith will come out and is sitting at the door while the other one went through the door. So that'll prevent them from blocking the door space. Because this guy here is going to focus on the skeleton, and this one won't move and will focus on the wraith. Um, I probably will lose both after they attack. What are they doing? They're going to attack for one damage, so uh, it's not bad at all. They would uh, turn you brittle if there was ice on the board, but there's no ice. Um, I actually i am very happy with that. So one damage attack won't kill them. Uh, the Wraith could get killed, actually. But the Wraith has a shield, too. So um, I'm feeling good about the position. So now we go to the Drifter, and yes, I'm going to move four, and then I'm going to move two tokens backwards one. It's that simple. So uh, just to show you, this one is going to allow me to move four, and then I'm going to move two tokens backwards one. So I'm going to do one each, and then here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, like so. So that's it uh, for him. Then the frozen corpses go. And so they are going to move uh, three spaces if they're elite. So one, two, three, skeleton. We got to do this in order, actually. This one's first. He's going to attack the wraith. So let's do it. Oh, he drew a plus two. So that puts him to three damage. That was the only card, the only one that could have killed it. So it just did three damage and she has a shield two and only one health, so the Wraith dies. There's not a dang thing I can do about it. I already used the Warden thing. Oh my gosh, I, that was so awful. It's not even funny. But okay, well you got one less person clogging the door, I guess. All right, this, now we go to two, which is gonna to move to attack the skeleton. And there it is. Then three, one, two, three. It's gonna go up and attack the skeleton. There we go. And then this one doesn't move and is gonna attack the skeleton. And no damage at all to the skeleton. If any of those cards would have been drawn, we would have had our wraith still alive. But it is what it is. And so they are moving in, and it is getting a little claustrophobic, but we are good. All right, so then the Banner Spear is going to forego his attack, her attack and summon a reinforcement, which will give her an experience point. 
and she will be at full health. And then last but not link, at least uh, Blink Blade will go to full health and rest. And so now we got to burn a card. Um, I'm burning this card. So, and then he gets another token towards fast. And there we go. Cards are back in hand. Items refresh. He's ready to rock and roll. Okay, uh, that... Uh, was round two. So now we end the round and we go to round three. And in round three, um, <coughs> another one comes out right here. <coughs> so the frozen corpse here, we have to add one more elite. And there it is. So uh, it said number five, so we should probably make sure the numbers match up. So this one's number six. So let's get number five out. And there she be. All right, so another one is out. And yeah, we got a lot to do, Scooby-Doo. Um, these are the only two cards remaining, so I will just play them as fast as possible. So we're going to put in 46. The, um, the Banner Spear has to rest. Uh, I don't necessarily need the 99, but I'm going to. I'm going to get my armor back. Uh, the Banner Spear has to babysit this, uh, this banner. Um, maybe I should short rest. I just won't have my armor. Okay, fine. I'm going to short rest the Banner Spear. So that means I have to shuffle and discard one randomly, and then I get to play my two cards. One second, I just need to make sure. Yep, I got to shuffle a combat deck for one of my other characters. Completely unrelated. But I just realized I drew a doubler with the uh, Bone Shaper, and I need to reshuffle her deck. All right, back to regularly scheduled programming. This one, grant two allies to move. I'm going to lose a hit point and draw another one. I'm going to lose a hit point and draw another one. I'm okay with losing that one. So two hit points lost for the Banner Spear. And now we're going to get to select our cards, and we're going to do exactly that. Um, I'm going to do this one. And then for the top, I'm going to do a javelin. So that's a 21. Get a 21 in there. Blink Blade is going to go fast. And I'm going to do the 7 movement and burn the card. I know, that's crazy. I, I shouldn't do that. I mean, it's a 4 damage. Hold on, let's see if there's anything else that's big movement. That's 5 movement and doesn't burn the card. 2, 3, 4, 5. Gets me into the room, that's for sure. Uh, the 4 movement would then allow enemies and allies to suffer a damage. Ah, but they can't. They're immune. So I'm going to do... I'll do the 5 movement one. That's a 20. And then for the top, I don't have enough range to hit anything. So it's just... It's a waste. The top one is just I'm wasting something. I'm actually going to do this one, which lets me move two more. All right, but it's going to be a 20. It's just going to get to go Jimmy John fast. And then the drifter... Uh, we have two cards left, so these are the two I have to play. I will do the 14, and we're going to basically just do the basic move and at least get into the room. And so we'll do a 14 there. Done. 
All right, I will at least get into the room. It's going to be ugly, but it'll happen. All right, let's draw the cards. All right, card is drawn. They're going last. Uh, like I said, this is round three. So we're going to start at the top. The drifter goes first. Um, I will... This will be my top card because I'm at least going to shield and retaliate. So if they attack me, since I'm the lowest priority, I'm going to be the target of all their attacks. So hopefully I can get a retaliate one. So I'm going to play that. That's actually a wonderful card. And then the bottom here I'm going to just do for a basic move. And then I'm going to move my marker to make it a move four. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. And he's right next to the skeleton. All right, so right there he is. Um, so he will draw the ire of some of them. Next up is Blink Blade. And like I said, we're gonna move uh, five with this one. And then we're gonna move two more with this one for seven. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two um, gets me closer to the altar. All right, his turn's over. And by the way, all of them are within range of the banner, so they would have healed. The banner spear, for example, is gonna heal one, and her turn starts. So we're going to go two spaces. So I'm gonna move one, two, and then I get to move the banner, two allies, two spaces. So this is where it gets interesting. I'm actually gonna force the bone shaper through the door so that way I can move our banner two spaces to the door. And this guy, I get to choose where he goes. So I would have moved him there. And so that's the, um, this part, the bottom. And then for the top, I get to throw three spaces. So I could go through the door one, two. Yeah, I can't hit anybody. So the that doesn't do anything. Um, I guess it puts the uh, the wind on the board, but that's it. So wasn't able to hit anything. Uh, I thought I was going to, but I guess not. All right, her turn's over. Now the skeletons get to go. Now remember, the skeletons are focusing on the altar. These guys who are immune are not a focus. So this skeleton will go one, two. This one is going to go one into the doorway. And that's it. I only have two skeletons on the board at the moment. And so um, these are the only cards I have left. So um, I could grant one of my summons the ability to poison all. If somebody is immune to damage, I can still poison them. Um, that is interesting. Now, each of the summons are only near one person, but I could poison somebody, even though it's immune to damage, because poisoning is a condition, it's not damage. Uh, it does say they can't be focused on, so, but this is, I'm, I'm basically telling him to poison everybody around him. Um, but all means allies too. And so that's the problem. I'd be poisoning my own allies. The other option I have is to summon this thing, which is dangerous. Even though it has six health, uh, he's gonna be in the middle of a whole bunch of guys that are gonna do three damage with each attack. Um, I am not summoning him. Uh, I could do an attack and just poison somebody so I can do it that way and then make this just a basic move. Yeah, that's what I will do. I'm gonna do a basic move. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do a basic move to here, and then I'm going to summon him here. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that works. All right. Didn't even consider that. So let me get this guy out. Grab another blue base. All right, so we got our little corpse dude here. 
And the reason I'm not worried is uh, these guys aren't moving. They have no movement points. So there's no way he's going to get attacked. Okay. <clears throat> That's the end of all of our turns. So now it's the frozen corpse time. And just to recap for you, they all have retaliate. So if we ever do start attacking them, they're going to retaliate. That's one. Number two, they're all elite. Actually, they are moving one space. And then they're going to do three damage. And there's no fire, so uh, there's no damage done to them. Uh, we're going to start with number one here, this one. And the drifter is the target, because the drifter is the closest um, or the uh, the lowest initiative and is the closest without having to move. Two, also going to target the drifter. Three is going to move one space and target the drifter. Four is going to block the door and target the drifter. And then five is just going to move one space and target nobody. So the door is now officially blocked because of the drifter, but that will change. I'm not worried about it. I got people through the door. Uh, we're not a, a concern there. But I basically have four people attacking the drifter. So I do have a leather armor and I also have shield and they're all three damage each. So this could kill the drifter. So I do need to be prepared. But remember, I have retaliate one, but ah, darn it, they can't take damage. So that's they're immune to that. But I do have a shield of one and I am going to, I do have to rest soon. So I'm gonna use the leather armor on the first attack. So there's a minus one and a minus one. Dang it, both of those were good. So that's a two damage. Uh, he has a shield of one, so it becomes one damage. And then I'm gonna use the heater shield to make it zero. So no damage on the first attack. All right, second attack. That's three damage, shield makes it two. So I have two damage done. Here's the third attack. Three becomes two, shield makes it a one. So now I have three total damage. Last attack, that becomes a four, minus one is a three, so that becomes six total damage. Six total damage to the drifter. Yeah, I'll take it. That's half his health. So he's at six out of 12 right now. All right, that brings the end of the round. Okay, we're in a new round. The altar is still sitting strong. The round number is now four. On the fifth round, another one spawns. And then after that, we can quit worrying about round numbers. Um, I have, uh, so my, um, my Bone Shaper is currently out of cards. So I'm either long resting or I'm gunning for glory. And I think I need to gun for glory. We're near the end. So we got to get that altar killed. So I'm going to shuffle and see which card we just lost. This one is actually really good because every single one of those guys has retaliate. Hmm. Do I want to lose a hit point for this? These other cards could be better. That's the reason why I'm worried. <coughs> Poisoning is actually sort of nice too, but um This is normally a card I would gladly get rid of, but I'm actually going to take the hit. I'm going to lose a health for this. So I'm down to six, and we're going to draw another one. This hurts, but I will go ahead and lose that one. All right, so what two cards am I going to pick? Um, I am not attacking those things yet, so I think I want to move myself and move a summon. So I really like that card right now. And then for the top, yeah, let's get another summon on the board. We're going to get a skeleton out. So we're going to go at 18. 18 is good. That means we're going to go early and get out of everybody's way. All right, the banner spear. I got to play this goofy game of moving things, but those big behemoth guys are in my way. 
Um, I summoned a reinforcement, so this should not have been in my hand, so I'm going to place that down. And I should also have an experience point for that. I think I do. Okay. So everybody's immune to me. I can't do anything. I can give people movement points, which will help move them out of the way. Um, I don't want the, the banner to be destroyed. So I think I want to go as late as possible. Yeah, I do. I want to go as late as possible right now because I don't necessarily need to move the banner into the room yet. I want these guys to start coming this way and then we can come into the room with the banner. So what do I want to do? Well, uh, there is a skeleton at that doorway that can't go through them. I think I want to, yeah, we'll go as late as possible with 69. Yay. And for the top piece, there is wind on the board, but I can't do any damage to anything. And I, I don't want to, the tip of the spear is something I'll definitely be able to do as soon as I can do damage to them. I, I do have the ability to fly over them, but I don't want to leave the banner behind. One, two, three. I could fly over them and stay within range of the banner. That's crazy, but I can do it. Yeah, I might as well, right? Let's get positioned in the room. Um, but I'm still going to go late with 69. All right, Blink Blade, as we denoted, is already well on his way. He can go fast or slow this round. That thing has 16 health points. I think I want to hit and then go two spaces and take the loot. So I for sure want to take that and let's go fast. So then I just need to move up to the altar and I only need two movement points for that. So I could do this one, which uh, the altar is considered an enemy. So I can make it suffer one damage, move up to it, make it suffer to one damage. Yeah, I am absolutely going to do that, and I'm punching in 36. That is great. Okay, next, <clears throat> the drifter needs to rest. So he needs to have five cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are doing great. I am going to short rest with the Drifter. Um, that Retaliate 1 was excellent. By the way, this is now in the discard pile. It was excellent, but um, <laughs> everybody uh, focused him, but uh, it doesn't do any good. All right, what card are we going to lose? Uh, that's a move 4. A move 4 would actually come in very handy right now. I'm going to take another loss. I'm going to go down to 5 health. What's the next one? Yep, I'm okay with losing that one. So that's the burn. And then I am actually picking the move 4 as my card. And then for the top, we can just um, murder, death, kill something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... So we got two of these that moves tokens backwards. I don't think I have to worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 90. So we're going to punch him in at 32. He's going to go up and hit that altar. All right. Uh, now, the only drawback, of course, is that uh, he didn't get to refresh his items. <clears throat> OK. So. Let's draw the card. And the banner spear is the only one that's going to go after them, which is fine. And let's start with the bone shaper. So skeleton one. Oh, my apologies. 
I need to have a raging corpse out there. And that raging corpse has one, two, three, four, five, six health. It moves at two. And it does three damage. All right, so starting back at the top, the skeleton one will move two spaces. One, two. The skeleton two is stuck. It's behind these guys, and it can't go anywhere. Skeleton, or Raging Corpse, moves two spaces. So, actually, let me think about this. Yeah, that would have been one, two. Then this one would just go one. You would think he would go two, but he doesn't. He's just going to move one. So that's unfortunate. Um, and then we'll play our cards. The Bone Shaper is still within three. So she will heal one. And then here, I'm going to move two. So I'm going to go, What is? what are they doing? They're just going to do one damage attack. So I'm going to move one, two, and be next to this guy. And then I get to grant two movement to one of my dudes. So I'm going to grant that one two movement. I'm going to get him up to the altar. All right, so that is done. And then at the top, or I'm sorry, that's this card. And then I'm going to summon a skeleton with this one. And I'm going to summon the skeleton to go here. And it means another one comes out. And so number three. And then you can even see the order that they were summoned, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, the numbers are perfectly matched. All right, her turn's over. Next up is the Drifter. So like I said, I was going to do the move four card, which is going to turn into a move six because we're going to do this, and that's going to give us an experience point. So he's up to four, and it's going to go one, two, three. I only needed to go four. <laughs> um, that's crazy. But in order to make room for skeletons and stuff, I'm going to go five. And then uh, for the top half, I'm ignoring it, and I'm just doing a melee attack. And that's going to be a four damage melee attack, which gives me another experience point. And let's draw the card. And we drew a minus one. So that's three damage to the altar. One, two, three. All right, his turn's over. Um, the drifter was here, which is three away from the banner. So the drifter did get one health at the start of his turn. Blink Blade. Mr. Rapture is going to play this card. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one. Ooh. Actually, that's not good. Um, so I'm just going to play it for the basic movement. And I'm going to move one, two, and just, that's it. I still successfully do what I need to do. Then I'm going to do a three damage attack. And then I'm going to move two. And gain an experience point. Which is something he desperately needs. All right, let's do the three damage attack first. And there's a plus one. So we just did four damage. Come on. One, two, three, four. And then the two movement is going to allow me to go here and end my turn and take that loot. Um, I already looked it up before the scenario even started. I get to draw three loot. That's what that does. So one, I get a rock root. That's the turkey head. Two is a metal, and three, ooh, a three coin. That's a rare one. And then three coins. That's uh, that's worth six. All right, very good. And he's still being a peacemaker. He hasn't killed anybody, so uh, it's all working out. All right, so now that he's done, the frozen corpses now go, and they're all going to do different things. So uh, what they're going to do is they're going to move three spaces and attack for one damage. 
Well, these two here are going to attack that skeleton that's behind them. So that's number one and number four. So let's do number one first. All right, that plus two was not cool. So that's a three damage to the skeleton. And I already played my little ward thing, so I can't block damage to that skeleton. Uh, that kills the skeleton. So skeleton number two is dead. And that means this one goes into the discard pile. And I forgot to give Bone Shaper gets another experience. That was from the summon. Um, okay. Alright, that was unexpected. I wasn't expecting a one damage to kill somebody, but it did. Okay, next up is number two, which is this one, and that's going to attack the Bone Shaper for no damage. Next up is number three, which is this one, and it moves three spaces. So the focus is going to be the Bone Shaper. So it would go one, two, like this. Do a damage attack. So that's two damage to the Bone Shaper. Alright. Then number four is here. And believe it or not, it's actually going to attack the Banner. Oh no. Okay, one damage to the banner, which, by the way, I forgot to summon. So let's get that banner out. All right, it has four health, but now it only has three. So it's down to three health, and yeah, this thing is in the doorway now. So it's annoying. All right, and then, last but not least, is this one. Who will go, I guess we could go either way, so I'm going to go ahead and go uh, this way, and it's attacking, actually, it's going to attack number one, because that's the lowest priority one. So, skeleton one, it does a double, which is still only two damage to skeleton one. Uh, what did we say, skeleton two is dead. So we're going to remove him. And then skeleton one takes two damage. There we go. Alright, so they did some damage there, but there's not much else we could do. We gotta go and kill that altar and just survive. Alright, that is the end of the round. No, it's not the end of the round. Banner Spear gets to go. Uh, my plan was to get into that doorway, which didn't happen. But I am still going to move four spaces. Uh, one, two, three, and I guess four to here. I'm still three spaces away from the banner, so I don't break the rule. And then, um, yeah, the pincer movement would have been fantastic, but I still can't damage anybody. I probably should not have gotten rid of the pincer movement card, knowing I was going to jump over. I would have gotten rid of so many other cards instead. Uh, I'm sorry, if you'll let me retcon, I would have gotten rid of the tip of the spear instead. Um, and yeah, that did use my wing shoes. Alright. Uh, I do gain a health because of the the rule. And then my, uh, my little dude back here, I'm actually going to move him forward so that way uh, it's still going to attack the banner instead of him because the banner has lower is lower in the priority order. And in fact, I need to summon that dude so the order is preserved. And he has a whopping one health. And he moves two spaces. All right. Uh, now it's the end of the round. And we are at round five. So I'm going to go ahead and... Well, let me make sure. At the start of the round. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this round marker. So we have the final dude come out, and he's coming out down here, like so. All right, so we got a lot of frozen corpses on this board. And we still got to kill the altar before we can start taking them down. 
Um, I still think the scenario is going very well. I just can't let that banner get destroyed. All right, let's play our cards. Bone Shaper first. I sort of like that because I would like to get this altar destroyed as quickly as possible. Um, a curse, of course, is nice. And then grant. You know what? I'm going to do that one. And then for the bottom, how am I doing for health? I'm at five out of seven. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself for 30. It'll let me go a little earlier. Because if we kill that altar, then uh, things change. All right, so Blink Blade, it looks like I need to go slow. Did I really burn two fasts already? I guess I did. So I got to go slow. This one will heal everybody. I don't necessarily need to do that. That'll heal himself. He's doesn't. He's not damaged at all. Uh, this one will at least let him move without... Then I can ignore... Well, I can not move at all and ignore the effects of slow. But I'm going to probably do it for the basic. So that's a 75. And then for the top... Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I know it'll muddle him. But I may end up not doing anything. So that's a 47 for him. Okay, and then, um, oh, I forgot the banner spear. I definitely don't want that flag to be damaged. I could heal the flag. I'm not two spaces away from it. If that dang guy wasn't in the doorway, I could move allies through him, or through the door. Um, I'm going to do this because there's a possibility I'll be able to pincer if I could get that altar destroyed. <laughs> and then um, here, I have to pick one. So I'm going to pick this one. But I'm not going to pick it for the 17. I'm actually going to go at 69. So that is, does mean, though, my banner might get attacked again. All right, I'm having app issues. And then the drifter. We are next to this thing, so we just need to pummel it. And for example, I don't necessarily need to move. So I'm going to heal at 14. And then this would be a 5 damage attack, but it's not going to kill anything. I'm thinking what I want to do instead is I'll maybe play this one because I don't want to do the top piece yet. But I'll, you know, I could do it to heal himself. Eh. Let's do. I can move both backwards. We'll go ahead and do this one as the other one, and I'll probably just do a basic attack with it. So I'm punching in 14 for the drifter. He's probably going to go early. All right, so now we got to draw their cards and hope that the banner doesn't get attacked. They are going at 71, and they're going to do a two damage attack. Um, it means the banner spear does get to go first, and all of our wishes may come true. So we're going to start with the drifter. <coughs> drifter is going to heal himself for two. I could heal the skeleton for two, and I'm just gambling on the fact that are those guys moving? Yes. So, for example, this and this will both go after the Drifter, potentially. Although that... Potentially. They will move the least amount of spaces as their top priority. Um, how important is it to keep that skeleton up? Not. I'm going to heal myself for two. 
that puts me up to eight health. That's done. And then this one, I'm gonna move the token once and turn it into a four damage attack. And here's the card. I drew a doubler. What a great time to draw that card. Give me a second while I shuffle his deck. But basically, um, that really opens some doors here to making these guys vulnerable because that's eight damage. Puts them down to one health. Very, very good. Um, we're probably going to be damaging these guys. And that means that pincer, the one that I pulled back, um, is going to be valuable. So I know that was a little bit of a retcon, but I've said this before many times in this game and many other games. You can analysis paralysis it and make your game take forever, which I already do in some extent. <clears throat> or you just move quickly and then realize, oh gosh, if I would have thought this through a little bit deeper, I would never have made this choice and then just retcon it. And that's what I do. Um, some people, I, I bring this up all the time because some viewers really despise this. Um, I don't know if they've ever played a solitaire game before, but uh, I just feel like it happens all the time when you're controlling a game by yourself. All right, um, with that said, we did our heal, we did our damage, that was excellent. Next up is the Bone Shaper. So we gotta do this in order. There's only one health left on the altar, so this guy is gonna move one, and I get to choose, so I'm gonna choose this one, two. And so uh, we're gonna try to attack that, and as long as I don't draw a null, I didn't. In fact, I overkilled it for three damage. The altar is destroyed. And that means we can finally go after these guys. All right, everybody else is fair game. So we gotta go back up, because the Raging Corpse is next. He's already next to somebody, and that's who he's gonna attack. So he's gonna attack number five. He drew a minus one. Now, these guys have shield, so they're annoying, and they have retaliate. So, the Raging Corpse took one damage, and uh, the Raging Corpse does a three damage attack, had a minus one and a shield, so number five only got hit for one damage, so he's down to nine. I got a lot of hit points I gotta go through, folks. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Then number three, we get to choose which way we want him to go. I think um, let's have the summons gang up. So uh, actually, let me think about this. What is Blink going to do? Nope, I'm going to have him go the other way and attack this one, number two. So let's draw the card. All right, so that's normally two damage. The shield's going to make it one. So summon number three. Um, it's supposed to have th three health, but now it has two. And and because of the shield, frozen corpse number two only takes one damage. We got to get some poisons out for sure. That card where I can do a bunch of poisons would be nice. Um, an enemy did die. It was the altar, so I do get to heal too. Um, yes, I'm going to heal too. So the Bone Shaper goes back up to full health, seven. And then we're going to curse an enemy and grant one of our summons uh, adjacent to the target an attack. And I'm going to grant the corpse, because the corpse attacks with a three damage attack. And we're going to put Knight on the board. The knight is somebody, something that she can use. Um, so let's draw for the corpse attack, and that was an excellent draw. So that's five damage, minus one, becomes four against enemy number five. One, two, three, four damage. And then we're gonna add another curse to the deck. All right, that was good. And then of course the, the corpse takes another hit and is down to four health because <coughs> of the retaliate. Okay, uh, we're not done, thankfully. The Bone Shaper is done. Now it's Blink Blade's turn. And yeah, we're going to move two spaces to here. And then um, 
the top card is a four damage and then he's gonna muddle himself which gives him disadvantage but we're gonna go ahead and oh holy cow if I attack number five it's almost dead number five has five health I'm gonna do a four damage attack if I draw a plus one I will have I'd actually have to draw a plus two to kill it I think I'm safe I'm gonna go ahead and draw I know this is a risk I drew a zero thank goodness I know it's, I was finally I'm rooting to not kill something for a change so a four damage attack becomes three so it's down to two health um, I was contemplating poisoning it or giving myself advantage but I don't want to kill it I want to poison something that's still at 10 health because that'll make it easier to kill but for now the blink blade did the best he could the the biggest issue is he's now muddled which you know it's a little bit of an annoyance that means next time he attacks he'll have disadvantage <sighs> all right um, that is done next up as you can see the banner the reinforcement and the banner spear goes so we're going to I'm gonna do this for the basic movement and I'm gonna move back one space and we're gonna attack number four here and I have pincer so that's a five damage attack against him and it is gonna muddle him and give him disadvantage so I'm gonna draw the card we drew a zero so we did four damage to number four one two three four and number four is muddled all right that brings the end of banner spears turn and now it's time for them they're gonna do uh, they all move two movement and do two damage attacks so we're gonna start with number one that's this one he's going to attack the banner spear and I have nothing to to mitigate that the banner spear by the way is never allowed to kill an elite I am um, I'm pretty sure I'm still good on that one I wasn't paying attention but I gotta be careful because I can't kill these guys uh, alright so banner spear uh, two damage attack one damage to the banner spear which is fine all right, number two is here and we'll attack the skeleton. So it's a two damage attack, becomes three. Skeleton three is destroyed, unfortunately. So another summon goes down. All right, number three is this one. And that's attacking the Bone Shaper for two damage. And yeah, the Bone Shaper just takes two. Number four is here. And unfortunately, it is going to attack the Banner because that's the first in the order for two damage, but it has disadvantage because we muddled it. There's the first, there's the second. So. How many damage was it for? So it's going to do one damage to the banner. And basically what I need to do is I need to move that banner away from the door. And I am going to be able to do that with my next move because they're going to be able to move allies within range of three. <clears throat> okay, that is done. And then of course his muddle is gone. Number five. Oh, and then we need to add, there's a sixth one. Number five here is gonna attack the skeleton for one damage. And what did we say? Skeleton number three is dead. Skeleton one also dead. They're wiping out all of our summons. They're killing their own kind. Okay, then um, the last one is gonna go after the drifter. For four damage. Boy, I'm glad I healed the drifter. 
One, two, three, four. All right, that's the end of the round. That was a little tough. Okay, so let's let's get back in the fray. This one, if I kill somebody, I immediately get to summon somebody for free. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It is a burn card, but it's time. And I guess for now I'm going to make it so all my summons are unaffected by by uh, retaliate. Sure, let's do it. 26. Um, Banner Spear has only one card left. I guess I'm short resting again. I don't want to. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to use my stamina potion. Let's me get a level one card from my discard pile. So let's do that. And I'm going to grab Pincer back. I don't want to kill this guy, though. But Pincer is all I got. Yeah, we're going to Pincer him. So we'll do uh, 25. All right, um, Blink Blade has to rest. I can't believe he has to rest already. I didn't even use, I guess, yeah, because we were going after the altar, so I didn't have to use my items. Um, so he's going to short rest. He can't kill anything, but he can sure do damage. Um, I like this card. I'm going to take a hit point. I like that card too. Yeah, I have to pick something, so I'm going to go ahead and let him burn that. All right, what cards are we going to play? I actually want to play that one. And then maybe, because uh, we do have the ability to go fast, I'm thinking this one. So everybody just suffers one damage. Yeah, I am going to do that. So we're going to go fast, and it's going to be 36. He is muddled. I forgot about that, but that's okay. We can mitigate that. And um, the Drifter, I'm going to do the thing that lets him heal himself. So that's a 27. And then we just need to murder, death, kill along the top here. I think I want to do this one, and we'll do it for the basic. <clears throat> okay, that would be put him at a 23. All right, let's draw the card. So they're going last at 42, which does mean we get to beat up on them for a while. So let's see how we do. I have a drifter with only four health. I have a move too. So I'm going to move right in between all these guys. That does mean I'm going to take a lot of hits, but I'm going to go up to six health. And then I'm going to hit this guy, not number five, but this one. He has, I'm going to hit him for four damage. So that means I got to move this because I just moved. And I actually could have moved more spaces. And I am going to do that. I'm going to move three, four, so I'm behind them. And I'm still going to attack the same guy. I gain one experience point for that. And it's going to be a 4 damage attack. 
minus one for the shield. So number three is going to take one, two, three hits. All right, but this one is going to give me experience point. And it says, on your next six melee attacks targeting an enemy adjacent to any other enemy, one enemy adjacent to the target suffers two. So that means number two is going to suffer two damage. That's why I was going to do it. Now, I could have killed number five, which um, there's a reason I didn't. Um, and unfortunately, I think he's going to die anyways. But um, I wanted the Bone Shaper to kill somebody so she could get a free summon. And number five is, of course, an easy target, but her, uh, her summon is going to be the one that kills it. Okay, so um, that's his turn. He's done. Go back up to the top. Next is the Banner Spear. So we're going to go ahead and do a pincer movement again. And that is a five damage attack, which will muddle the dude. We're going to draw. And it's a plus zero again. So that gives us four damage against number four. One, two, three, four. And then I have the grant two allies within three spaces, three movement. And um, now the Banner Spear actually healed one at the start of her turn. And then um, I'm going to move the banner back one space uh, because now the, the guy won't target it. And then I get to move allies within three spaces, three spaces. So the Bone Shaper is within three. It would have been nice to move the Summon, but I can't reach that far. But I can move the Bone Shaper three spaces, and the attack she's going to do is a melee. It's not a range. Number four only has two health. I would like to get her right here, but that means I have to move out of the way, and I can't. So... Um, if this guy was out of the way, we could have moved her in and she could have finished off number four perfectly. Number two and number three. Yeah, I don't need to move them. I could move the drifter. I don't need to move the drifter either. So it's really just her. Ah. I'm going to just move this guy here because that allows me to do the pincer. But beyond that, yeah, I'm not doing anything else. I guess it's a little bit of a letdown. Um, next up is the summon. So uh, the Raging Corpse is the only one left. So it will attack number five. He did get a minus one. And so number five actually stays alive because with his shield... And he must have watched Short Circuit last night. Number five is alive. All right. So it only did one damage. And it does take the retaliate. That's the part about... Um, so that card is actually not that good of a card, if, now that I think about it. So this here... All your summons' attacks are unaffected by this. Um... I guess technically you don't get the card back until your next turn, so um, if I play it now, then the next time these guys go, he won't be doing anything. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play it. It's a, oh, it's a burn card. Yeah, I'm still going to play it. Well, no, I don't like that. Well, let me think about it. Let, I'm going to play the top card, which is also a burn card. I'm going to do a four damage attack against number five, and if I kill it, I get to summon something for free. And I'm going to summon, and it has to be from your discard pile, so it can't be the Wraith, because uh, that's in the burn pile. And I will summon a Skeleton, assuming that my hit succeeds. And of course it does with so many extra damage at points, it's not even funny. But number five is dead. And a Skeleton comes out. Uh, I'm going to grab number one, and I'm going to put it right here. So, Skeleton... It's summoned, and I don't have to lose two hit points for it. That's the big thing.
all right. Uh, I don't know how exciting that was. And so, yeah, this would make it so retaliate doesn't hurt them. Oh, it's forever. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to play that. I, I don't know why I was thinking it was just for this turn. It's forever. Yeah, I should have played that earlier. My apologies. So that lets me get uh, two more experience points. And turn is over. Now Blink Blade is up. We're going to do this four movement, all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one. And I just realized that I should have moved the Drifter. Yes, I should have. So I'm going to put this guy back. The Drifter should have moved uh, to here. And here's why. Because I'm going to do um, four movement right now. One, two, three, four. I'm standing here. And um, I don't want to do damage to the Drifter. So um, everybody suffers one damage. So that means number two and number three take a damage. And I'm going to do a three damage attack against both of them. And I gain an experience point for that. Okay, now this is an attack that is a single attack action. So I'm going to do a spyglass to cancel my muddle. So I would normally have advantage, but all that did was cancel the muddle. And then I'm going to do a poison to uh, poison them both. So uh, here we go. Does it poison both of them? It's an attack ability. I'm going to say no. So I'm going to poison the uh, number two here. So we're going to attack number three first. And I guess uh, number three has disadvantage. So there's a minus one. And there's a miss. So I completely missed. Then number two, I canceled it. So I get a plus one. And, um, and then I'm also poisoning him. So number two going to take one, two, three damage and poison. And number three, of course, doesn't get hit at all. All right, so that was Blink Blade. And then uh, after Blink Blade, it's time for the monsters to go. So we're going to start with number one. Uh, the Drifter was the lowest character, so number one is going to attack the Drifter. And everybody's going to attack for one single damage point. So Really not a big deal, but let's do it. Drifter is going to get attacked for no damage. Number two is this one. It's going to attack the Bone Shaper for one damage. So that's two damage to the Bone Shaper. She's down to three. Number three is dead. Number four is going to attack the Reinforcement, unfortunately. And no damage. Boy, we got lucky there. Number five is dead? Where's, oh, three, two, oh, three. Two was supposed to attack this guy. So he took two damage. Three took no damage to the Bone Shaper. Yeah, I got to fix this. I did things in the wrong order here. The Drifter took two damage. And then now four is attacking and we may not get lucky anymore. I got to get another minus one. Nope, didn't get lucky. He's dead. So that goes back in our discard pile. All right, and then number five is dead. Number six, uh, these guys move three spaces. It is going to attack him for one. Whoops. Oh, I guess it drew it. I don't know what just happened there. Why did the curse go away? So one damage. 
to the Raging Corpse. Okay. New round. There's no more spawning, by the way. It's just, we gotta just kill all these guys. Bone Shaper is out of cards again. And I've been short resting, but I'm not going to this time. I'm going to long rest, get my two health back, and just let things be. So Bone Shaper is gonna go 99. All right. The um, Banner Spear is in the same boat, and I'm going to long rest the Banner Spear as well. So 99. Again. Okay, Blink Blade can't kill anybody. <laughs> what can we do? It would be nice to do some wounds, but Blink Blade has to go slow. So don't play this card. Uh, what can we do slow? Uh, we could heal everybody, but I don't necessarily need to. So we got a two damage we can do. Yeah, we'll do that for two damage. And then we have a um, we have a power leak which is four damage. Um, I mean, I'm a little nervous. I don't want to kill somebody, but yeah, we'll play those. And it's going to be a 47. Then uh, the drifter has just two cards left. And we'll just play them both. So 65. And then we're going to draw for them. And there's a chance they're going first, and they are. And they're doing that stupid breath thing. It is only going to be one damage, but they're going to hit many targets. And I don't like it. So it would have been nice to have the retaliate right here. But we're going to start with number one. Uh, the target would be the drifter and so it would hit these two and then three so it's only hitting the drifter for one so one damage to the drifter he's down to three health go to number two number two um, it's gonna hit blink blade is the focus no, Drifter is the focus, so it's going to hit the Drifter and the Banner Spear. So let's do Drifter first, then Banner Spear. So no damage to the Banner Spear, but one to the Drifter. And then number three is going to focus on Blink Blade. For two damage. Uh, Blink Blade's going to use his shield to reduce one of them. Okay, and then number four is going to go after Banner Spear and then Blink Blade. I'm sorry, not Blink Blade, but you, Banner Spear for one and then Drifter for one more. Drifter is down to one health. Banner Spear down to 11. And then um, number six here is going to go after the skeleton or the corpse and misses. All right. That was a little painful, but we did survive it. Uh, we're going to go first with Blink Blade. So this little heal thing might actually be worth doing now. But then I'm doing, I guess I could do just do a basic attack. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the power leak, which makes me lose the card. But I'm going to move, so he's right there. I'm going to move one space over. So I'm next to the banner spear and the drifter. Actually, no, I'm going to move three spaces. So now I'm next to him. I got to look at the enemy real quick. Two is almost dead. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then what he does is he's going to heal 
himself and everybody around him for two. Um, so he heals for two. The drifter heals for two, which is much needed. And the bone shaper also heals for two. Not as needed, but it's still done. And actually, the bone shaper didn't need the healing, so I'm going to take that back. And then I'm going to position him here, and he's going to attack number one. That way I don't run the risk of killing him. So we're going to attack number one uh, with just a basic attack. And so it does a whopping one damage, because number one has shield. And his turn's over. Next up is Drifter, who we're going to do this here. That's a melee attack, which is going to wound. And we're going to do it on number one here. So I'm going to use my token and make that a three damage attack. So that moves this to there. And then this is going to also move because I'm going to be damaging his buddy. So. First of all, three damage attack. Ah, you suck. But I still get to damage his buddy. So I get to do two damage to number four. And that's the one that's been the problem child, and I do kill it. So uh, this number one still gets wounded, even though I did no damage to him. And so uh, we at least wounded him, and then the other one dies. And the dying thing was important, because First of all, he was blocking the door. And then secondly, I can now get that banner moved up so we can start healing everybody else. Um, so that was his bottom action. Now his top action, we're going to attack again for four damage. It's just a basic attack. I'm not using the card. and But this time I'm going to attack number two and use that other ability again. So this ability is going to be used again. And then that's going to also be used. I'm near the end. But... Um, I'm going to gain two experience points for this. And um, it's a four damage attack against number two. And that happens. And so three damage goes through. And number two is going to die. So number two is dead. And then the number three that's next to it is going to take two damage because of my ability. So that's good. We got another loot that just dropped. All right, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I need to have five or more cards. The Bone Shaper killed one of these, by the way. So the Bone Shaper killed one of every type. So, um, and we know that because she summoned the skeleton because she killed one. So very happy. We got the two check marks there. Um, the Banner Spear is not allowed to kill anybody. The Blink Blade's not allowed to kill anybody. <laughs> So we gotta we gotta do all the work with the other two characters. Okay, after the drifter, the the skeletons or the undead gets to go. Now I don't have to worry about retaliate. And by the way, the drifter would have been retaliated against twice. So one and two, he would have taken two hits. Ouch. Yeah, I definitely need to heal that drifter. Okay, so the bone shaper. Uh, first of all, this guy goes first. He's going to attack number six for three damage. Not modified, so he does two damage to number six, which is a full health behemoth. And number five is dead. I don't see it on the board at all. So number five is gone. In fact, I only have one, three, and six on the board. So number four is also gone. There we go. We've got it cleaned up a little bit. All right, and then the skeleton gets to do something. So he's going to target the lowest number. Uh, it would have been him, because he's number one, but there's no movement to get there. So the skeleton's going to move to get here and a target number three. And that's a three damage attack, which does two damage to number three. And he's down to two. All right, so that's it for them. And now we get to play our cards, which we're resting and Banner Spear's resting. So uh, let's go back up. I'm sorry. Uh, the rest gives, 
her two health. We got to burn a card from her hand. Uh, this card should be gone, so my apologies for still having it in my hand. Um, which card are we burning? I think we should burn this one. All right, so then we'll. I'm just going to leave them here because we're going to play them for the next round. And then the Banner Spear uh, does heal up to full health. Uh, what card is she burning? Uh, I don't need this one. Yeah, so I'm going to burn that one. All right, and I'm going to leave this out. That's the end of the round. We're getting close, folks. Uh, the Drifter is very close to getting exhausted, and so I do have concerns about that one, but let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, the Bone Shaper can heal allies, which includes the Banner Spear. I'm sorry, the Drifter, I mean. We could do it. I don't know if I want to, but we could. Uh, like this one here, grant an ally five damage. Now that would kill the drifter, and he's the only one. Well, I could I could actually grant it to one of my one of my summons. Yeah, we're gonna play that one. 83. And then for the top half. Yeah, since the summons don't get retaliate anymore, I'm gonna do this, and that's a 70. So that's a late go, but we're gonna do it. Otherwise, I would have to do a lower number, like this one. So maybe instead of granting a plus five damage, yeah, but I need the top. Oh, I see. So instead of doing the curse and the extra attack, yeah, I'll do this. That way I'm going earlier. I'm gonna go 30, because I need to get that guy um, saved. So we'll do it that way. And yes, it would be nice to summon some other people, but these are the only three cards she has left in her hand. So I may not be summoning skeletons anymore for that reason. I also have the Horn of Command, which I may start to use. Uh, banner. All right, so I can move that banner through the door now if I wanted to, but that number one guy is really annoying and in my way. Uh, we do have, we actually have a situation that I rarely ever see, but I could have done this attack right here and disarmed him. Uh, we actually have that exact situation set up right there. Um, but unfortunately, this is in my burn pile, so I can't do it. Uh, I am actually going to, since I can't, I shouldn't be killing any monsters, I'm going to do this and heal the Drifter. And that's why I should have maybe kept that six card, because that guarantees that I go early enough to do it. I didn't even consider that. Um, I could push. That's an interesting option to push. But I'm going to do this so I can loot. Yeah, so we're going to go at 25. It's really weird when two of your characters you really can't attack with them for the rest of the game. All right, so Blink Blade, I forgot to put the token on. We can go fast this time. Uh, that one guy he's next to is already wounded, but this is an excellent one. So we're gonna go ahead and do 20. And I guess we can just sort out which top or bottom we're gonna do later, but we're gonna just punch in 20 for him. And then uh, the Drifter. I can short rest or long rest, and uh, because I'm almost at zero health, I should probably long rest. I guess I could short rest and then I can heal myself through my, this. And other people are also healing me, so I can count on that. And he's the only guy that can really kill anything but I also have to move my tokens backwards. I have all kinds of problems right now. <laughs> uh, I could do a range attack, of course. Yeah, 
If I short rest, it just lets me get leather armor and a shield back. Uh, I'm sorry, long rest. I'm going to go ahead and short rest again. Uh, let's just hope I don't... Yeah, I destroyed one of the cards I needed, but that's okay. I got another one. And I'm actually going to play... That so what I can do is I got two choices. I can actually do something like this, which lets me move something backwards. But the problem is, is I'm moving the move token forward when I do this. Or I can do this, where I'm doing a range attack, which doesn't use my my token. I know it's a weird dilemma to be in, but I have it. Like I actually want to move two of my tokens back so I can continue to use them to pummel the enemy. So I am going to do that, and then I'm going to do the heal one at the bottom. So that lets me go early. It does mean I'm going to get targeted again, but I will heal myself. And this won't use a movement token. All right, there we go. Let's draw. How am I doing on time? Yeah, it's about a two-hour video. And there we go. He's coming early. He's just He's not doing any damage at all. Did you see that? He's just going to put Brittle and Immobilize on people. So that's fine. I'm cool with that. Heal two. Drifter is going to go up to three. Uh, the Drifter is not in range of the banner. And then I'm going to move the character tokens on two things backwards. I know it sounds silly, but... Um, It's something I need to do, and I'm going to move this one backwards, and then, of course, the move one backwards. So now I get to do two more attacks at plus two. <clears throat> All right. Um, it does mean that this round is probably going to be uh, a big waste, but that's okay. Now, uh, as far as the health of these guys go, this one is at nine, this one is at two, and then this one is at eight. So both of these have a lot of health. So what I'm looking at here is I can move five spaces and then damage one for three and immobilize it. And then even get an experience point out of the deal. Or I can move two spaces and damage one for three, actually four, and then wound it and gain an experience point. Number one is already wounded. And speaking of which, I forgot to wound him last round. So he's down to 8 health, not 9. So number 1's already wounded, and then 2 spaces doesn't get me to number 6, which, because remember, I don't want to kill somebody. I know, it's such a weird thing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am... I'm going to attack number 1 for 4 damage. I know he's already wounded, but I still get the experience point. <coughs> We're going to do 4 damage, and then I'm just going to do a basic move 2 and loot this token. So he will move 1, 2, like so, and loot that token. So uh, 4 damage. Here we go. And I drew a plus 0, so it becomes 3. And then I take a damage because he has retaliate. And then number 1, 1, 2, 3 damage because he has shield. So I didn't kill anybody. I'm still holding true to my moral principles. Um, it's going to be time to... Uh, well, actually, I apologize. I meant to do this as well. I'm going to use my Renewing Potion to make it so I have a Poison Dagger and this. So I'm going to give myself advantage, and I'm going to poison him. So let me draw one more. So I'm just going to add uh, one more damage to him. So number one has one more damage, and he's poisoned. So that's that's going to be helpful with taking down number one. And that was a very successful turn for Blinkblade. <laughs> he will have to rest after this. Um, but his Peacemonger, he's damaging people, but he's not killing them. I guess that, that makes you a Peacemonger. Um, there's a lot of political parties in my country that uh, lives to that same principle. It's okay to damage them, just as long as you don't kill them, right? All right, uh, let's keep going. Blink Blade's turn is over, so now they get to go. So number one here is going to go after the Drifter. And what he's going to do is he's going to force the Drifter to be immobilized and brittle. 
but nothing else. Number six is going to do the same on the corpse. And number three is going to do the same on Blink Blade, unfortunately. So Blink Blade, immobilized and brittle. And then the corpse, immobilized and brittle. But they don't attack this round. Excellent. All right, uh, now we go to the Banner Spear. Banner Spear, uh, we're not moving, we're just gonna loot. And then we're going to we're gonna heal the Drifter for two and put Regenerate on him. So that is a good move there. So the Drifter gets healed for two and that actually gets rid of his Brittle. And he gets Regenerate. It does not get rid of his Immobilize though. Okay, Banner Spear is over. The Bone Shaper, uh, this one goes first. It will attack number six for three damage. Plus one makes it four. So four damage. Um, to number six, which becomes three. So it's down to five health. There is no retaliate because of my card. And then skeleton number one here is going to actually attack number three. And I could use my sh command to make him move somewhere else, but yeah, I'm okay with that. So this is a two damage attack. Oh, hold on. Was I supposed to shuffle? No, actually, no. No shuffle with this guy. So yeah, it just does one damage to number three, which is down to one single health, but he stays alive. I'm realizing it was the drifter that needs to shuffle. And maybe Blink Blade needs to shuffle. I think I'm gonna get a mastery, folks. That's what's crazy about this. Uh, I'm realizing I need to just pick one character at a time to try to get a mastery. Uh, getting more than one at the same time is a little too much. And then, yeah, this one, yeah, he needs to shuffle. So I probably have an asterisk there because I think Blink Blade attack without a null card. All right, that's done. That's done. I just realized I need to loot for the Banner Spear. And if I draw a wood, that's gonna help her towards her retirement. And there it is, there's a lumber. So one step closer for the banner spear. I um, I wanna see what these characters are like at higher levels, I, that's for sure. I'm okay with pushing them along, I guess. The banner spear is not my favorite character. I am, it's grown on me though. I, I think the one I like the least right now is Blink Blade. And that's the one I think I like the most in the beginning. So it's sort of interesting how that's playing out. Um, so yeah, just bear with me. I'm going to mark she's gotten her third lumber and she needs eight, I think. Yeah, it's a massive amount. I mean, she's only at three out of eight. So I think there's a lot of game left and all that does is that unlocks a mission that then has to be taken to completion. We're going to have the banner spear for a while. Okay, that was just catching up her turn. I'm going to delete the reinforcement because he died. Oh, we got to do the Bone Shaper's turn now. So I think I was going to do this, uh, which will heal an ally for two. So we're going to hit the Drifter for two more. Oh, I don't know why I was looking to my left. The Drifter is now up to seven health and we're going to grant that Drifter a five damage attack against number one. And that is going to give an experience point to the Bone Shaper. And the Drifter is going to draw and draws a plus one. Excellent. There's that card. So number one, I think, is dead. 
Yeah, I mean, that was six damage. Yeah, number one is toast. So another loot token drops. Uh, there is no retaliate because of that, so I don't lose my regenerate. And that was excellent. So we killed another one. End of round. We are close. This should be in the bag. But we still have to be careful, but it should be in the bag. Um, I can curse two people and curse again. So I'm going to do that with 70 and 71. So we're going to punch in 70. For the banner spear, I can't kill anybody, so I'm just going to go around and loot. So I think I'm going to do this one. So I can loot. I actually don't need to move allies. So I'm going to we're going to do that one. And then for the top action, I have nothing to do. So I'm just going to get rid of a high number card, like 67. Blink Blade has to rest. And I am going to do a long rest with him. That'll get rid of the... Um, that's going to get rid of both of his conditions. Although um, he could still get hit. Uh... Banner Spear is a 21. And then Drifter. Yeah, we need to just go go to Pound Town for uh, Drifter. Uh, if we're going to do a move three. That'll give him five movement. And then we're going to do this one, which will do a five damage attack. So that's a 23. Drifter is going to go to town. And then we're going to draw our card. And he's going late. These guys are toast. I think this will be the last round of the game. So Banner Spear is first. I am going to discard this. We're doing nothing with the top. I am just going to move one space here. I can push somebody two spaces, three spaces away, which is interesting. So I don't necessarily need to push these, but I keep forgetting that I it's a ranged push. Um, so I could have pushed somebody out of the doorway. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to loot this one. And let's see if we get another lumber. That would actually uh, be funny. And there it is! <laughs> another lumber! <laughs> Alright, I look, I'm okay with this. Because, like, if I don't want her to retire, I just don't have to do whatever mission she ends up unlocking. Um, until she collects eight lumber, I don't even get to, to try or make that decision. Um... But yeah, I mean, you see how many missions I had to play so far before they even leveled up? So, I mean, in order to get them up to, like, level 5, which is, gives you a really good feel for how these characters are, um, gosh darn it, I, you know, how many missions is that going to take? Uh, I do think, because, like, eventually we get far enough in the scenarios, uh, in Gloomhaven, Isaac would... Like, if you completed, like, especially, like, a bonus scenario, you would just straight up, every character gets 10 or 20 experience points. Like, boom, you're just getting 10 or 20. And then if we're playing a higher level um, dungeon, uh, you're getting more experience points for that. Because, like, uh, right here, you can see we're getting six points of experience when we do this, and two money, etc. Um, there's a nice chart, actually, on the back of the rule book. If we can get up to level seven scenario, we're getting 18 experience points every time we do a mission. And that's huge. Now the hazardous terrain is extra damaging. The trap damage is super duper high. But look at that, you're getting six gold per coin. And the monster level, of course, is a lot worse. So you're getting a lot more rewards. Um, it's an interesting balance. And in Gloomhaven, I made the argument, and it's true. In Gloomhaven, um, so after I beat it, I created my dream team, and I started at level 7, you get more gold and more stuff, um, more experience points. Like, you actually can get your characters leveled up and more powerful quicker. Um, so it's sort of a nice little balance, and some video games act that way too. Like, if you ramp up the difficulty, you get more experience points. You get more rewards. And sometimes that makes the ramped up difficulty worth it. 
I, I'm not going crazy like that here, but maybe I should have made this scenario level two. If I would have made it level two, uh, we would have gotten eight experience points at the end of the mission instead of six. I mean, is two experience points going to make the difference? Probably not. Um, the gold would have been worth three each instead of two. You know, so it starts to add up. Uh, but anyways, uh, Banner Spear's turn is over. Next is the Drifter. The Drifter is immobilized. I totally forgot he was immobilized. Hold on. Hold on, he's immobilized. I can't do anything with the mobilized character. So I would have healed himself, which he doesn't need. Yeah, he's immobilized, so I have to do a range attack. I actually chose a range attack, by the way, but that wasn't why I chose it. Uh, I'm going to do this one, 32 which means he still would go next. So I'm not messing with the turn order. And I guess I would choose this one to heal himself, which he doesn't need. Because uh, Drifter is going to heal one from the um, Regenerate, and then heal two for himself, but he's not moving anywhere. That's going to go away. And then he's going to do a range attack, which does not move any of his tokens. Uh, he's going to do a range 4 range attack to poison somebody for 1 damage. And 1, 2, 3, 4 hits number 6. That's who uh, we want to hit because number 6 is the one with the most health. Uh, number 1 is dead. And so... So we did no damage, but we do poison him. Done. All right, so he's poisoned, and then, um, yeah, his turn's over, so who's next? Then the, at a 70, Bone Shaper goes next, because the Frozen Corpse doesn't go until 71. All right, so we start with this one. He's three damage attack on number six. And look at this. We curse him. So we finally drew this card. It's a it's a plus zero, so he does three damage, but he's also cursed. So let's get that curse in. And then three damage on number six. The poison cancels the shield. So one, two, three. And then the skeleton is gonna attack number three for one damage and because of the shield, but the skeleton kills him. So number three drops. And then the Bone Shaper. I think we were going to do this to curse two of them, and then this to attack. But um, I'm actually going to instead grant one of my summons a loot one and do nothing with the top. Um, I could summon a skeleton, but I don't need to. And I know this is crazy, but um, this guy is so close to death, I am, I'm in loot mode. So there's two loot tokens I'm going to get for this. So we're going to prolong it one more turn so I can get two loots. So here we go. First one is a wood. Second one is two money. I got to like that. All right, I got the two money and the wood. We're getting a lot of wood all of a sudden. Those are for the bone shaper. So it means this guy lives to fight another day. Uh, we are at the... Oh, Blink Blade is going to rest, which will cause him to heal. And these all go away. Uh, the Raging Corpse was not able to move. But he is brittle. Um, so if he ever gets attacked... And yeah, everybody's all up. So we're going to end the round. One more round. Bone Shaper has no cards left. So Bone Shaper gonna rest. Banner Spear gonna give people some movement and do nothing. But we knew that. 
Blink Blade was supposed to burn a card. All of his cards are back. It doesn't even matter which card, but we're going to make sure he can loot, so I'm not burning that one. I would like something that gives him experience points on the bottom. Is there anything that gives him experience on the bottom? No, not really. So I'm going to go ahead and burn this one. And then his two cards are going to be, we're going to do the move with the loot, although the experience point would have been nice. Um, I think the move with the loot is what we're going to need to do. Yes, it is. So I'm going to go slow. 74, that puts another token on. And then for the bottom, I it doesn't matter really what I have on the bottom. So I'm just going to do uh, this one here, which will just be used for its basic. And then the drifter. Now I'm not immobilized, so yes, now I want to play this card on the top and this card on the bottom. So we're going to go at a 23. And then Blink Blade's going at a 74. All right, we're going to draw our card, and this is all just laughable. I mean, he is going early. He is going to do a lot of damage. Banner Spear goes first. All I'm doing is moving the banner towards me and then quitting. Rage quitting, in fact. So here we go. One, two, the banner is now at the door. And the banner has entered the house. And Drifter is up. Uh, Drifter is going to actually heal because the banner is in his area and his regenerate. The Drifter is back to full health. And then this is a move three. And then we're going to use the uh, move token here. So it becomes five, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to the bottom. Then we're going to do an attack one, uh, attack bonus, which gives us an experience point. So we're up to nine. Uh, we did get to move something backwards, one space. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and move the, the move one back. And then uh, this one is going to be a five damage attack, which assuming I don't null, which I didn't. Um, number six is toast. He only had two health. So six is gone and then loot drops. So it doesn't matter what everybody else does. Uh, the blink blade had a move two, loot one. And so that's what's going to do that. And then the round is over. So that's all I was shooting for. So I basically prolonged the round so I can get some extra loot. And this one was, I apologize for not showing you, it was a lumber. All right, so that's everything. I'm very happy, very proud. Okay, mission's over. Let's do the busy work. We gotta do our check marks, we gotta do all that stuff. Um, let me push this out of the way so I can have some more room. And then we'll go do an outpost phase and all that stuff later. Um, we are definitely leveling Blink, Blink Blade up this time. So let's start with my checklist. Okay, recover all cards, blah, blah, blah. Get your experience. Gain gold from your loot. Resources from your loot. Check marks for achieving battle goals. Read the scenario conclusion. Gain all scenario rewards. Let's actually do that first. Let's do the scenario conclusion. Um, well, actually, while I'm here, I want to do the app part. So the Banner Spear has three experience plus the six makes it nine. So she got a measly nine this round. Then the drifter got nine plus six. So the drifter got 15. The drifter is just rolling an experience. Okay, and then um, Blink Blade has five plus six. So he gets 11. And then Bone Shaper gets 14. All right, so that's squared away there. Um, now I can close this app and not have to worry about it. And let's get this up. So 
Silence is something you're beginning to treasure. All around, the crypt is littered with broken bodies. The dusty remains of the undead horde smashed to bits. The altar, which had been pumping out its necrotic fume, now decorates the floor as rubble. In its place, a beam of eerie green light trickles from a new gap in the wall. You move closer and discover a passage that appears to lead farther down. It's clear this complex continues and that some bizarre power lies hidden within. The question is whether it's worth investigating. The other option, of course, is to continue hunting the Orgox that dropped you in here. However, after scrambling your way out of the pit, you realize that your quarry's tracks lead from the forest out into the frozen tundra. Attempting to follow without the right equipment would be suicidal. If you want to give chase, You'll have to come back with a sled. Okay, so it does actually show the rewards here, which is sort of nice. Um, you're going to gain two collective lumber, and then we unlock nine and ten, but they don't appear to be linked. We'll get out our little advent calendar and make sure. Um, for the two collective lumber, I'm actually, I don't know if it's supposed to be individual. I mean, I guess the collective means it could be. I'm going to just give it straight to the party. So we're currently at six lumber in the party. Uh, so the town, I mean. And then I'm going to hit finished. All right, so um, we unlocked nine and ten. So let's get our little advent calendar and sort that out. So, yeah, that's my son, Jason. He used to play games... I'm sort of like Rodney Smith. My kids played games with me when I was younger. They still play games with me, but they don't want to be on the channel anymore. Um, so yeah, he has definitely grown up. All right, um, so here's number nine, and there's number 10. They're both Algox missions, of course. So let's do number nine first. And it is the glowing catacombs. So we got our little item there. And then this seems to happen a lot where the outer edge, this is all just sticker material. So this one has a symbol of a calendar with a puzzle piece below it. Okay, I'm just gonna look at another advent thing. The calendar means it's unlocked by a calendar section and the puzzle piece is unlocked by a puzzle. So, um, I don't know what that means. Uh, it said that if you go into nine, I guess, yeah, we're, we'd, be, we'd have to go deeper and there's a potential puzzle thing that we're gonna unlock there. So uh, nine is excellent. And then tw 10 here, let's get this one up. So if you do it properly, the sticker piece goes with it and it looks like this. And then you just take the sticker off. But what happens is, is that it does something like this and it peels like that. And then you've got the sticker that's left behind. So anyways, we got two items that I'll have to update. And then number 10 here is uh, really the main storyline. And uh, you can see here, this unlock the two missions and then that'll unlock 18 eventually. So um, we do get to go back to Frosthaven. I was wondering if there's gonna be a linked mission and it's not, not a linked mission even though it does look like you're going deeper into the catacombs there. I am curious about the catacombs. Like I am gonna definitely check that out and that might be where we're gonna go next. I always liked the idea of a puzzle and knowing from Gloomhaven, all that fancy stuff that he, uh, the designer does, um, you usually unlock things in your town and all kinds of cool stuff. All right, so we got that part out of the way. Now let's do the administrative yet very fun part. Uh, so we got Bone Shaper up here first, and um, uh, we're not in town yet, so we're not leveling up, but I can assure you that, um, so we have 45 plus this, um, that's what, 59, and 9 is 68, so we're nowhere near the 95 yet, but we did complete our battle objective, which is two check marks, and that's a lot of check marks, so I'm very happy with that. Those are always the, the golden delicious ones. And so we get two check marks, like so, 
and that gives us another perk. So I'm going to replace another minus one with a curse card. I loved that curse card when we drew it, and we're going to get another one. So we got that coming out, and the other beautiful magical thing is to get rid of one of these, because those are annoying, especially when our summons only do two damage each. So uh, improving her deck like this makes your summons so much more powerful. Um, getting rid of those minuses, uh, very, very helpful. And then, of course, putting curses in the deck. I um, There's certain characters... I know I had I always tell you what my dream team is, but there's another character that would just do area of effect attacks and it would curse everybody it hits. Oh gosh, it was like um, it's I don't remember what character class like um what race it is, but it's like it's a race that's usually an enemy. Like you actually fight them, but this one was on your side. I I, I want to say it was like a Medusa, but it but it floated off the ground and I mean it was a very nasty thing but you know with them being on your side uh it's collector or something i can't remember but anyways it, it was awesome and in fact uh i think a lot of faqs had to be made because um we would just curse 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 <laughs> we'd fill the monster deck with curses i think there's a limit now to how many you can put in okay we did the two uh we for sure did not uh do this so uh pennywise is done uh rapture is for sure going to level up 12, 22, 30, 38, 48, 49. Yay, just barely enough. Um, the combat objective was complete. He was a peacemonger, so he gets two check marks. So even though he's leveling up slow, his perk progression is great. He's got two more check marks on his way to another perk. Um, I did not make it so he was never targeted. And I didn't go fast seven times in a row. So nothing I can do about that. His turn's over. The Drifter. Everybody, by the way, hit their combat objective this round. Uh, we get a check mark. We have five or more total cards in hand. This is just a discard pile. One, two, three, four, five, six. And um, technically speaking, these are all in the discard pile too. So that would be eight. And then he has one in his hand. So he actually had nine cards. He blew it out of the water. It's really nice when he's a guy who starts the game with 12 cards, so um, it's pretty easy to have five left. And this was a shorter scenario, actually. Um, so this was a perfect scenario to get that. So he gets his one check mark. Not enough to unlock a perk, but he's on his way. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we don't even have four persistent abilities out there. We only have three. He was on the end for just one of them. And of course, I didn't do the bottom. That actually requires some serious concentration. Uh, the Banner Spear, we actually did this. We got our first mastery in the game. Perform a Banner Summon ability on your first turn. Keep the banner alive and within three of you for the entire scenario. Complete. No ambiguity on how this one reads. That one I'm not so sure about, but this one, we actually did it and well done. I am very impressed uh, with myself. Yep, yeah, um, I know. Uh, and then I got a check mark there. So Plebeian... Uh, he did not kill any elites, or she did not kill any elites. So we actually unlock... So what do you get for the mastery? You just get another perk. <laughs> um, but another perk is never bad. So let's see. I think I'm going to just stick with my guns. I always, always, always improve my deck more than anything. So yeah, I'm going to do the minus one replace with this card which we didn't end up drawing last time so this is the only character who never saw its new card um, the banner spear very rarely attacks I'm starting to realize like I'm looking at my attack deck she drew four cards the whole game and so I, I'm not attacking as often with her um, as I do with other characters I know I, I for this one I wasn't supposed to be killing uh, any elites and I'm finding though that she's either moving allies or she's um, healing and so um, it's not quite as prevalent and then of course we need to get rid of one of her minus ones which she will gladly do 
And what's funny is I picked up the deck to look for it. There it is. It was at the bottom. So we weren't going to draw that sucker. I mean, we've, we would have drawn the doubler long before then, which was there. And then, of course, that's the new card. Well, the new card I just added is this right there. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Done and done. Um, yeah, very happy with that. That, I think, rounds up the... Uh, that concludes... Oh no, we got to do the loot. I apologize. I got to go through all four of these again. All right, the banner spear has two lumber. Done. The drifter has a metal, and for the first time ever, a mushroom. So. The Blink Blade has quite a few. So we got a Lumber. Nine, no, six gold. Two metal. And a Rock Root. So let's take care of the six gold right now. He's actually sitting on a nice pile of gold at the moment. And then uh, last but not least, Miss Bone Shaper actually has a lot of stuff coming. We got another lumber for her. And then uh, two, four, six gold for her. So the one person who doesn't have gold is, well, I mean, the Banner Spear now has 10, but um, she's like the lowest on everything. It makes me wonder, like, do I even take her turn? I know I do. And I'm always contemplating, like, how do I f make formations and all this other stuff? But, yeah. And I'm just putting away the cards. And I am going to end the video soon. So thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome. I am just... Um, putting these cards away and then I'm going to hit end video so you can go ahead and quit now if you'd like. Um, just while I have this in my hand, I don't want to put it down. And yes, we will do the frost post or outpost phase in the next video. Stay awesome.